Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at my choice for the top releases for the Nintendo Switch eShop in February of 2021. So if you're new to the channel or new to this series, this is something that I try to do at the beginning of every month where we look at the games that are currently announced to be released. So I picked out 10 games for this month that I find really, really stand out from the pack and that might be interesting to pick up. Now, it's also important to note that these are not necessarily eShop exclusive games. Some of these games will be getting physical releases and I'll try to point it out as we go along. At the same time, since February is looking like somewhat of a packed month already, at the end of the video, I will be giving a shout out to a couple of games that we won't go into details on, but I do still think we should be keeping an eye out for. Now, don't forget that as we go through the video, if you like what you're seeing, please do hit that like button. It really does help out a lot and consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. So the first game I really want to take a look at is Habroxia 2, which is a retro inspired space shooter. Now, if you're new to the channel, you don't know this, but I am a huge fan of retro games and space shooters are among some of the games that I really, really enjoy playing in little spurts. And Hybroxia 2 currently seems like the perfect game for that type of thing. Hybroxia 1 was actually a pretty decent experience. And by the description of the game, this time around, they really seem to have brought all the elements from the first game and upped them in the second game. Among which are going to be really 20 new unique bosses. You have customizable weapon loadouts. You also even have upgradable uh, upgrades to your ship that persist throughout the gameplay to allow you to progress. And what I find really, really interesting as well is they even seem to have time to add in a couple of extra modes to extend your playtime. Because the problem with modern space shooters is when you put a progression system in it, often the game becomes very short. However, at the same time, what they seem to be offering in this case is once you're done, there is a new game plus feature and even a boss rush mode. So I do think that Hybroxia 2 is going to be a game to keep your eye out for on February 3rd. It has a sale price right now of only $9.99. If there's a pre-release window, I will most likely be picking it up. Now, the next game on the list we don't have to wait too long for either is going to be releasing on February 4th. And that is Blue Fire. And in my opinion, Blue Fire might be the biggest sleeper hit of February. Just because this game sort of came out of nowhere. And it really, really looks, look really quickly, it looks like a 3D Hol Hollow Knight. And it is a 3D action platformer. And I really, really like the graphical style they went with. Because like I said, it does reminisce very quickly the Hollow Knight series. And by what I've seen, I'm not the only one that's excited for this game. And there seems to be some hints out there that the gameplay is very solid. Now, this game could go either way. If the gameplay turns out to be very solid, this could be a massive sleeper hit. However, at the same time, if the game releases with graphical issues, with, you know, controls that are so-so, it could go totally the other way. But Blue Fire 2, I am definitely going to be picking up and reviewing for the channel. So keep an eye out for that. Now for the next game that I really want to pick out for the month of February, we're jumping a week ahead to February 11th, and that will be Little Nightmares 2. Now Little Nightmares 2, if you didn't play the first one, it's a puzzle platformer, but set in a totally really creepy environment where you play childlike character. If you're a fan of creepy horror type gameplay, this is definitely going to be a game for you. Now, Little Nightmares 1 was very, very well received. I personally, I enjoyed it. I just found the controls to be somewhat iffy at times because there were some issues I found with the, you know, responsiveness of the controls. So if they managed to tighten that up for Little Nightmares 2, add in the same type of spooky original content, this is going to be a really, really solid game. And... There is a downloadable demo for this one. So I really do think that if you are interested, if anything I've said interests you in any way, pick up that downloadable demo. See if there's something you might want to play because it is one of the more expensive releases on the eShop at $30 right now. But at the same time, the quality of the game, I, I think is going to be really worth it. Now, next, if we jump to February 12th, I don't think I have to make much introduction for this game. 
we have Super Mario 3D World slash Bowser's Fury coming out. Now, this obviously will have a physical release. I'm going to be picking up this game physically. Uh, I will be most likely doing a Let's Play on the channel for it on February 12th or 13th, somewhere around there. But basically, this is a port of the Wii U game that is coming now to the Nintendo Switch. It looks amazing, and the Bowser's Fury extra content really, really seems interesting. And it seems to not only be an open field, it seems to be somewhat of a campaign. I'm hearing that it's supposed to last three or four hours. I know some people are disappointed because they would have liked a longer campaign, but at least we're not just getting a flat port with nothing added. So I'm sort of happy on that point, especially that I personally missed 3D Mario, uh, Mario 3D World because it was on the Wii U. But then again, you know, your decision will be out there. This is a first party game. It's going to be a big release at $60. Like I said, personally, I'll be picking it up physically. Let me know what you think about this game. Are you going to be picking it up or not? Now, the next game I want to look at is also currently scheduled to be released on February 12th. However, this game has actually been pushed back a couple of times. It was supposed to release in January. Now it's in February. I don't know if it's actually going to make it. And that is Halloween Forever. It's a retro inspired, uh, basically, platformer. And I'll be honest with you guys, it really looks like a hardcore Mega Man clone. Like, other than having the Halloween aesthetic and different sort of setups, especially when you look at the boss battle, this looks like a hardcore Mega Man clone. So these games can always go one of two ways. If the gameplay is solid, original content, it can actually be really, really fun, if, especially if they base it around, like I said, the Mega Man physics. However, at the same time, if this turns out to just be a cheap Mega Man clone, it could be a totally awful game. But I am ready to take a risk on this game. I don't know if I'll be able to review it uh, right as it comes out because it's launching on the same day as Mario 3D World and I will most likely will be dedicating a lot of time to that game. But I will be trying to get around to this if it finally does release on February 12th. Now we jump ahead to February 22nd where Persona 5 Strikers will be releasing. Personally, I'm not the biggest Persona fan out there. However, I really am going to keep an eye on this game nonetheless. Uh, reasons why is because, well, Persona 5 is sort of the biggest hit of the Persona series, in my opinion. And on top of it, this is sort of an adaptation that is out of the RPG type. Uh, it looks like sort of a Hyrule's Warrior version, but using the Persona characters. Uh, personally, I'm not too familiar with the Striker series. But at the same time, I did want to at least mention the game because I think it's one of the huge releases for the month of February. I do think it's going to sell a ton of copies and going to get a ton of attention. I'm just really looking forward to see if the gameplay turns out to be solid. If the frame rate is solid, this could turn out to be a mega smash hit. And I might end up picking it up if I see a couple of reviews pointing in that direction. Now, the next game that I want to take a look at is releasing on February 23rd, and that is Curse of the Dead Gods, which explains itself as a roguelite game. However, the reason I want to point out this game and I'm going to be keeping an eye on it is if I show you the first screenshot, you're going to see what I'm talking about. If this doesn't look like it's Hades, Hades inspired, I don't know what game is. Uh, honestly, we had to expect this. Hades was such a big hit that obviously other companies are going to be trying to capitalize on that type of gameplay and see if they can make a, a hit or at least a game that can approach the level that Hades is. I'm not having super high hopes for this game, but at the same time, I don't just want to disregard it and assume it's going to be bad because it looks like a Hades clone. So I am going to be keeping an eye on Curse of the Dead Gods. I most likely will be picking it up and trying it out myself really to make my own opinion about it. Um, the, like I said, the only element where I'm a little bit scared that I won't be able to get out a review quick enough is there's so many other huge games around the same dates that uh, it might be a little bit tight. But this one, I think, is a definite one to keep an eye out for in the month of February. So we have three games left, and the next game I want to take a look at is going to be Taxi Chaos. Now, this looks like a spiritual successor to Crazy Taxi. 
And I personally loved Crazy Taxi. I had it on my old Sega systems. This is a game that I really, really want to check out. If you've never played Crazy Taxi, it's an arcade style racer where you basically play a taxi driver that has to pick up passengers, deliver them, do sometimes deliveries depending on the gameplay. And basically you have to drive like a crazy maniac throughout the city to basically deliver your passengers as quickly as possible which is the reason why it was called originally Crazy Taxi. Now, this one's called Cra Taxi Chaos, but if we look at the graphics, we don't get much, but what we see from, if the graphics are solid like this, it will, and the gameplay and frame rate is solid, this will most likely be a really significant release and might be a ton of fun. The price is a little bit high at $34.95. Like I would have really liked to see this more uh, released between $20 and $25, but all depending on how long the game is and how complete and done with quality it is, it could be worth it. I'll try and see if I can pick up a copy to get a review out for, uh, but this one, if I think is going to be one of the most interesting hits of February as well. And it really caught my eye when I saw it, because like I said, if you're a fan of the old Crazy Taxi series, this one will basically definitely be on your radar. Now for the next game, we jump to February 25th, and that is Ghost and Goblins Resurrection. If you know me, I don't think you were doubting that this game would be on the list, because like I said, I'm a huge fan of the retro classic series, uh, and Ghost and Goblins is a definite game that I'm going to want to play. It's redone in like two and a half D graphics. And honestly, uh, the gameplay looks very, very honest to the original game, meaning that it's going to be solidly difficult. I am hoping that they inputted like maybe checkpoints or some kind of progression system so that people that do want to sort of take it one chapter at a time and save their progress and try it a little bit later, that they don't have to do it all in one shot like the original Ghosts and Goblins, which was the biggest sort of, I would say, obstacle to people finishing the first game. You know, each section, if you take it individually, is not that hard, but you do have to try it like a lot of people like 20, 30 times before you get each section, which is why most people give up before the end. I hope they did input some kind of progression system this time around. Uh, the only thing that has really disappointed me with this remake from Capcom is the price. I'll be honest with you, $30 for this remake does seem very high, but you know, if you know Capcom, that's sort of what they do. They re-released the, the old Resident Evils like at $40. Uh, they, they eventually dropped it down, I think, to like between $20 and $30, but it took them a really long time to realize that they released them too expensive. I do think it's the same thing here for Ghosts and Goblins. Like to me, this feels like it should have been like a $15 release, not a $30 release, especially that it's a remake of the original game. I still think they would have made tons of money on the game because so many fans of the original series are out there. So, you know, that's the only thing that's turning me off on this game is that 30 bucks on it is quite expensive. But, you know, at the same time, Depending on what other games I pick up, I might pick it up as soon as it comes out just to give you guys all my thoughts on the series. Now, the last and probably second biggest game of the month of February is releasing on February 26th, and that is Bravely Default 2, which is a really, really huge RPG series. Now, if you haven't played Bravely Default 1, you're missing out because Bravely Default is an amazing game, and Bravely Default 2 seems to be going along pretty well. There is a downloadable demo once again for this game. Also, this game is another game that is getting a physical release because it is a full priced $60 game. I will be picking this one up physically as well. Most likely do a let's play as I'll do for uh, Mario 3D World. So, you know, keep an eye out for that if you're interested. But basically, Bravely Default 2, uh, if you're an RPG fan, is a game that should definitely be on your radar. You should drop everything to play it, finish this game, because it is an amazing RPG series. And honestly, this game has been in the makings for quite a while. Uh, people have been waiting for it. So I don't think we need to talk about it much more than that and or need any more intro than that. It's coming out at the end of the month. So at least the two $60 buys, like one is mid-February, one is la end of February, not gonna be too hardcore. 
but at the same time, you know, February is going to be an expensive month if you want to get AAA games. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I want to do a quick, a few quick shout outs to games that didn't make the top 10 list, but at the same time, I think do deserve some attention. Skyforge, a free to play MMO RPG. It has decent reviews online because it's all already available on other platforms. I personally will not be getting into it because I don't have time for, for an MMO RPG. But if you're looking for a free to play game, this might be a decent one on your radar. Also, Choices That Matter and Their Heroes Were Lost on February 10th. I know a lot of people are fans of these choice making series. Uh, there's a follow up coming out at only $4.79. I'm sure a ton of people are going to be excited for this game. So, you know, I think it's important to mention. Also, February 16, Asia Lane Crossways is, is coming out. I'm not a fan of this series, but I know a lot of people are, so I did want to mention it quickly in passing. And lastly, on February 18, Crazy Os, I hope that's how you pronounce, pronounce it, looks like a sort of Super Meat Boy inspired uh, puzzle platformer, but I'm a little saturated on puzzle platformers in the last few months, so I'm not sure I'm going to take the time to review this one, especially with all the other releases this month, but really quickly it does look like it could be solid so just want to mention it really quickly in passing so that's pretty much it for my list of new releases for the month of february of 2021 i want to hear what you think about my list so any questions comments any games that you think i missed out on that i should keep an eye on please drop it in the comments down below as i mentioned at the beginning of the video don't forget that if you do like these videos and you want to see more please hit that like button it really does help out a lot Consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already, and if you do, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my new videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.